548 here. Well, not everyone knows this safe way to freeze and defrost food, but today, my friends, you will learn. Oh, you're going to learn today. Ken has top five tips to keep your food tasting like it's fresh. Yeah. Now, we saw this morning with folks showing us their freezer, and you see a lot of things that have been there for a while. And right. I talked about how um, the full freezer is the status of the middle class. That's when the middle class has made it. You got a full freezer. It's true. But sometimes you have those, that food that's been in there for a long time and it's starting to get a little dicey. You're not quite sure if you can eat it or not. Well, here's the rules that come from the acting director of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. It is Kathy Bernard. And she wants to tell you exactly how to avoid any food poisoning or any issues when you're freezing and defrosting your food. So first thing you want to think about is how long can you freeze your food? Well, it depends on what it is. All right, you got frozen hamburgers. Those are good for, let's say, about three to four months. You have some cooked leftovers, those are good for six months. But if you have frozen steaks and things like that in there and whole chicken or a turkey, that can last for an entire year in your freezer. Wow. Before you have to deal with it. So think about it, frozen hamburgers, stuff like that, three or four months, you've got some other items there. Uh, leftovers, six months, frozen steak, whole chicken, turkey, a whole year. All right, number two, what about defrosting? You have three options, people. All right, you have the standard, put it in some cold water. You have just sitting it in the refrigerator for days to let it kind of organically or naturally thaw out and defrost, or you can put it in the microwave. I am never a fan of defrosting anything in the microwave. Mm. Never. Because if you do that, according to the acting manager of the Department of U.S. Department of Agriculture, you have to cook that item immediately because some things have already started happening in the microwave. I prefer, and I suggest that you take your time, plan ahead, put it out in the refrigerator, let it defrost and thaw out kind of on its own for about a day or two, then you can get to the business of cooking that item. Number three, now fish is one of those things that's super, super dicey when you're trying to freeze it and when you're also trying to purchase it. So when you're buying frozen fish, it needs to look like this. It has to be packaged or shrink wrapped so that everything is preserved on the inside. You have one other option. It's a thing called glazing. So when you freeze the fish, they put water on that fish and it sits there for quite some time until it gets about a six inch coating that's frozen around the edge of it. Then they wrap that in saran wrap and then they put that in the freezer. If your fish doesn't come in these two manners, do not buy frozen fish that way. It must be either uh, pressure wrapped or shrink wrapped or the glazing with the water and the ice all the way around it and a plastic bag as well. And last thing, what kind of fish should you always be eating? Salmon is always the best fish to eat. It's the best for you, and it keeps very well. Once you freeze it, it does not lose its nutrients. Men, your mom probably sent you off. Maybe your grandma sent you off. Go on into that freezer and get some of that stuff you can eat. Well, you better learn how to defrost that and how to properly freeze everything before you do all that. To find out more, go to gooddaysacramento.com. Click on Show Info for today's date. Man up for knowing exactly what you're eating and how to prepare it. Good Day continues right after this.